Hi, I'm Abe Edsorn. I'm Associate Professor in the School of Nursing at Western University and the Managing Editor of the International Journal on Homelessness. And I just wanted to make a quick video about categories and themes in doing qualitative thematic analysis. And so this is a little bit of a, an issue that I have been running up against again and again and one that has been around for decades now in qualitative research and so uh, you know i'd hoped it would be solved but it looks like we could continually use reminders on how this works and so what am i talking about here well i'm talking about the issue of folks doing qualitative thematic analysis and not going quite far enough into developing what i would truly refer to as themes and what I would suggest we keep ending up doing is stopping at categories. And so in understanding what I'm talking about here, it's important that we differentiate between codes, categories, and themes. And so coding is a simple labeling of chunks of data. And so anyone who has done any qualitative analysis, you should be uh, at least uh, confident or comfortable with the idea of coding. And the uh, first step involved is, often is like a open coding, uh, or you might be doing something a little more uh, based on a theoretical perspective, and you might be coding two existing known uh, concepts. Uh, either way, uh, the coding is that first step of attaching uh, some kind of a label uh, or a tag or a name to chunks of data. And so the next step uh, in the thematic analysis is to bring that data, the many, many codes together in some sort of thoughtful way. And in doing that, we often rely on things like our research questions, um, or we might again rely on some kind of uh, pre-existing theoretical framework to think about what uh, ways we're going to cluster our codes. And this is what I would call uh, creating categories most often. So let me use a, an example for you. One of my current students is studying the issue of child uh, separation in the context of homelessness. And so we know that uh, most uh, families experiencing homelessness are female led. And for these women, there is higher rates of having uh, had child separation prior to homelessness, as well as a very high risk of child separation during the experience of homelessness. And obviously that has all sorts of uh, painful uh, impacts. It creates trauma, it perpetuates trauma, and it can be a barrier that prevents folks uh, from exiting homelessness because of uh, everything that's going around, uh, their loss of their children. And, and most often that's loss of children to uh, some kind of children's services. So that's a topic area and uh, this student uh, hasn't done the research yet, but say they have and are looking at a bunch of transcripts with women who've had this experience of being homeless and of having their children uh, apprehended. And that uh, experience is what she's trying to unpack. And so She'll be, you know, pulling out the uh, important uh, or repeating or, um, you know, what she thinks are meaningful elements of this text, flagging those. And through that process, she might then see that there are some commonalities around, for example, uh, women who have had child loss prior to their experience of homelessness and uh, how that has has created the trauma that that uh, helped make them uh, uh, unstable around their housing and so she might have a category around you know uh, child uh, apprehension prior to homelessness she might have another category around uh, child apprehension that occurs during the experience of homelessness and then maybe some some subcategories in that around different causes of, of apprehension. So maybe 
um, you know, apprehension due to homelessness, apprehension due to substance use, apprehension due to violence. And, and so she's, she kind of categorizes her uh, different coded data in, in that way and then might make the error then to just start writing that piece as, you know, here's what we heard is the experience. There's an experience of apprehension prior to homelessness, there's experience of apprehension during homelessness that has these kind of three distinct causes and she writes up each of those. Now, as an article reviewer, as a thesis examiner, uh, as someone who's seen countless <laughs> qualitative research papers, that's the mistake that many people make and that I'm hoping we can encourage uh, folks to avoid repeating this is stopping at that point of categories. Now, the issue about stopping at those categories is that it just gives this very descriptive um, experience which for the most part doesn't provide anything that's terribly novel beyond what someone who works in the sector would just be able to tell you themselves and so what i mean by that is if you talked about you know what is the experience of child apprehension in relation to women's experiences of homelessness and you talk to a frontline service provider they would probably tell you you know those two categories and three subcategories just off the top of their head from their uh, experience of, of working in the sector and so you haven't really created anything that's terribly novel or or meaningful um other than describing kind of known elements within a, a human experience, which can be okay. There is room for descriptive type qualitative uh, research. Uh, and Sally Thorne has provided a really great uh, pathway to doing uh, qualitative descriptive work. Uh, however, if the point here was to understand the meaning of these experiences, then I would suggest the person hasn't gone far enough. Uh, and unfortunately, I find myself, for example, as a thesis or dissertation reviewer, you know, I get handed this, uh, this thesis to review and the analysis just stops at those types of categorizations. Uh, and unfortunately, it's, it's difficult at that point because really it, it feels like the person needs to do quite a bit more work to do that final step of, of actual, what I would call, um, thematic analysis and moving from categories to themes. And so we talked about what codes are, what categories are. So what are themes? Well, to me, themes are a provision of meaning. And so you as the researcher are giving a suggestion of what does this all mean? What is the uh, essence of knowledge that we can take from this to understand in a more effective way a particular experience. And so that's that next step to go from here's these kind of four typologies of experience to what does all of this experience mean? Uh, and so often in just reading an abstract, I can tell if the person has done a categorization or done a thematic analysis because themes will tend to have a richness to them that tell you that human meaning. And, and you can actually often, I find myself learning just by reading the themes listed in an abstract because those should push your thinking and understanding in, in new or um, deeper ways, just by often the, the name of the theme. And so a theme in this context might be something like trauma upon traumas. Uh, and it's that idea of, of trauma as a pathway into homelessness for women, and then this additional trauma of child uh, separation. So trauma upon traumas uh, might be something that that takes it from just these categories to, to the actual meaning of that experience. 
And well, I guess trauma on traumas isn't quite as as descriptive as other kind of theme labels uh, that I've seen. Um, you know, reading a couple sentences into to what that theme is about, I think would would give people kind of this like light bulb of what that experience is like or immersion into that that human experience. So thematic analysis really needs to be a move beyond categorization to creation of meaning, uh, ideally new and novel meaning. And when I'm reviewing an article and deciding if this article is even going to go forward into peer review uh, as an editor, for example, uh, I really need to see that there is some unique knowledge that's being created. Uh, unless this article is explicitly stated as a descriptive piece, I need to see that the researcher has gone beyond description to making meaning. Uh, and really, isn't that what we as, as researchers are, are here to do? We're to create new knowledge. We're to help people see the world in, in new or better ways. Uh, and our, our thematic analysis really needs to do that. It's not just about clustering data, uh, sorting data. I mean, that's part of the journey. Uh, and we need to get good at, at that, but that's not the point, right? The point is to create new knowledge uh, to share with others. So in a nutshell, when you are doing thematic analysis, yes, coding's a step. Yes, categorization can be a step. Most importantly, you have to move to the level of creating new meaning. There's lots of amazing folks uh, around you that if you're still looking at this set of data and you've done the coding and the categorizing and you're having trouble getting the meaning out of it, some of my colleagues like to do whiteboarding and, and sometimes just sitting around in a group and starting to throw things up on a board can be a way to, to start to bring that meaning out. We all have our different ways of doing that final step but the most important part is that we actually do it. So there you go. Hopefully that's helpful for you if you're doing qualitative thematic analysis. Make sure you actually get to the themes.